had an idea the other day. Something I wanted to, well, something I've wanted to test for a really long time, like many, many years. And it's quite relevant to the Volvo. So I wanted to test it even more. But, well, it's not that easy to test. And another part of this test is it might be a complete failure and a total waste of time, but it's gonna bug me forever if I don't test it. So I thought, screw it, I'm gonna go ahead with it. And one thing I needed was a really large throttle body. I had a look and much to my surprise, those like eBay 100 mil throttles that I remember from years ago, couldn't see them anymore. But what I did see was this. Uh, from Max Speeding Rods, 102 mil billet throttle, and no joke, it is a bloody billet work of art, and it's 56 quid. I only, I, you know, I wasn't going to spend because this is a pure experiment. I was only going to do this experiment if I could find one cheap enough. Hence me looking for those those rubbish eBay 100 mil throttles from back in the day. But it turns out. The game has moved on quite a bit since I last looked at throttles. That is just insane. And no joke, you know, it is not just some cast piece of aluminium. It is actual solid machine from solid billet. It's pretty incredible. And I mean, to be honest, this is a little bit dirty now because I've been messing about with it with dirty hands. You know, look at the state of my hands. Um, but... I mean, look at that. Jesus Christ. It is awesome. It's um, intended for an LS, so that's a LS fitment bolt pattern. Um, for what I want to do with it, we're going to have to modify it because, well, it's not the right fitment for that. Um, but it comes with an idle speed control valve. Again, I've removed it and I'm going to blank it off because I don't need any of that. And it comes with a TPS, again, both LS fitment, and I don't need that either, but I'm gonna keep it on there, because, again, it shows this really good. I've took them off both to check, and they both come with O-rings. So the typical problem with, which is kind of a, um, an unavoidable thing on boosted cars, especially with throttle bodies, is air leaks a tiny bit out the spindle. But this with an O-ring on it, which is not that common for, throttle body you know tps's and stuff should stop any leakage and you know, like i said the uh i'll just be control valve had one too but i've had to remove it totally because i need to blank that off completely because the air goes through that hole to that hole uh it's got an adjuster screw there which is all i'm going to need and that port there is to pre-throttle which i don't need but i might just i'll just blank it off because it might be useful one day it's actually the next day from the last bit of footage showing this throttle and it's been under quite a bit of surgery from the front here looks exactly the same far and a bit less shiny because i've uh, had my dirty hands all over it for the last day but it's very different now it's got a big bit of aluminium pipe welded to the back and also I've had to blank that off with a mixture of an M14 bolt and lots of JB weld. And do you know why it's doing that? Well, you can probably not guess, but this is going on a hose. Can you guess what car is going on? The Volvo. But it's not going to be a conventional throttle. This is a bit of a test to see if this works. This is going in front of the turbo. To a lot of people, this might sound fucking crazy, but this is how 80s and 90s Formula One and group and some Group B rally cars and a lot of rally cross cars right up into the 90s run their setups. And actually, current Formula One turbo engines use a much a fancier variation of this 
as did indie cars for a long long time right through the 90s and so on this this isn't a some crazy invention that i've just thought of it it works it is proven how well it works i have no idea so we're about to find out the inlet guide vane this device directs the air into the turbocharger to help increase the speed of the turbo at part throttle and therefore helps it spool. This other linkage on the back of the plenum is the ninth throttle blade. Together with the inlet guide vane, they both help recovery time of the turbo when you hit the throttle after you've been part throttle cruising around the racetrack. It um, kind of fell out of favour with a lot of things once proper conventional bang bang anti-lag appeared because that actually works better but this is a form of anti-lag helps keep the turbo spooling and supposedly it works really good and while a genuine you know version out of an old rally cross or formula one or whatever car will cost a fortune this has cost me like 56 quid so far so yeah what this is going to be is a secondary throttle so in front of the turbo the standard one will still be there and what this is meant to do basically is obviously it closes at the same time as your normal throttle and it's kind of like putting your hand over a vacuum cleaner. You know when you put a hand over a vacuum cleaner and you can hear it speed up? That's because it's now running, the compressor is running in a vacuum. So there's no, it's got no work to do. There is literally, uh, there's no airflow. So the motor is now unloaded and that's why you hear it speed up. Because there's no air to suck in, the electric motor has got nothing else to do so it speeds up and on an engine what that means is again there's no work to do so the turbine that well, one the entire turbo basically but the turbine's got no work to do the compressor's got no work to do so it either speeds up or doesn't slow as fast so yeah the theory is sound it's not even a theory it works if you look at industrial air compressors they nearly all run a very similar thing for very similar reasons, although they theirs is technically, you know, fuel economy really, but it is the same thing. The only question, and it's a common, I won't call it a myth because I don't know, but the usual thing is having something like this will make the compressor suck, because compressors aren't meant to work in a vacuum, it'll suck all the oil through the seal between the center core and the compressor and you end up with a, a smoky exhaust that that definitely makes sense and is definitely true in a lot of cases if this is the only throttle but i'm not so sure this is true if the conventional throttle is still there because thing is nearly all these stories come from people who's run 
draw through turbos where the carburetor is and indeed then the throttle plate is before the turbo but that's the only one on these race and rally cars this will be one of many throttles they'll either have this one plus one on the intake or this one plus one on every inlet port if they've got individual throttle bodies or some of them have one here one on the entry to the plenum and one on every intake port so on a v8 that would be like 10 10 throttles but it's a pure experiment but a relatively easy one to do so i'm going to do it i will show you what it's going to look like now basically this is going like so and then four inch elbow then the math then the filter simple i will put it all on now and then i will show you in a second this is it mounted in position and it actually neatens everything up as well to be fair it looks quite smart whether it'll work we will we'll soon find out but this is how it all sits math plugged in so you've got obviously turbo little connector hose throttle elbow math filter dead easy i'll put the boost pipe back on and then see if it starts because that's the first thing to do is adjust the the stop screw on the throttle because obviously with the throttle closed it still needs enough air to be able to bloody idle so uh, first step is see well first step is just getting it to idle properly but uh that's nothing after that we've got to see if we can make the throttle work which probably a bit more work but we'll work that out this should providing that throttle's open enough be able to idle whether it'll even start i don't know but we'll uh let's find out does idle so enough air is getting past that massive throttle which is what I hope to allow it to idle to do the throttle cable it needed to be well it needs to be custom so well where do you start and I didn't really know so where I started was I went to my friend's car spares place called car parts in Cheltenham and asked if he had any throttle cables and unsurprisingly nobody's bought any throttle cables or anything for years really from him but he had some kicking around from back in the day and when i mean back in the day this might have been before i was born <laughs> this is a throttle cable for a morris marina 1.3 1.8 deluxe and super deluxe 1971 on wow i can't finish it tonight because well, I've not got all the right bits to make a uh, full cable set up for the car, but I've got it on there now in a very bodgy way, and it does work, which kind of, you know, proves my uh, theory at least. I mean... to do anything that equates to actual performance difference lag difference i don't know yet
Well, it drove around the block. It's pretty horrible at the moment because the throttle cable is super fucking, well, the throttle pedal is super stiff because there's too much spring on it, of course. But my theory works at least. Whether it's going to help in performance, I don't know yet. But it was a test I need to do. It's another day because I had to wait for a decent throttle cable to use because the ones I was using, they just weren't quite long enough. I needed a bit longer. So unfortunately the Morris Marina one is no more. And I've got like a, some different one. It needed to be about a metre and a half long and that Morris Marina one was only just over a metre. Anyway, it's done. It works. Um, basically the, the Morris Marina one, I bodged on the car, even though it was way too short and couldn't stay like that, the other night and drove it around a block and it and it worked. But the pedal was ridiculously fucking stiff because of the double springs on the the LS 102 mil throttle. So today I've removed one spring. So now it's just a single spring throttle. Put a proper throttle cable on it. I made a throttle bracket for the pre-turbo throttle using funnily enough a spare conventional bracket and now it works so I open this throttle and watch and watch this one so yeah works fine works great um, obviously it's time to see how well it works. I mean, we got two issues. First issue is how effective is it? I mean, there's no denying it works because like I said, it's been used in Formula One turbo cars since the dawn of Formula One turbo engines in like the late 70s, early 80s and still used in the current ones. It was used in Group B Rallying, it's been used in Pikes Peak, it's been used in Rallycross. It's, it's a proven thing, it's not one of my wacky ideas. It's like, um, it's crazy for a road car, you never see a road car like this, but that's because people take their influence from other shitty tuned road cars, and it's like, take your influence from race cars, they're the best ones. Um, so yeah, this is well proven by some of the top fucking race teams on the planet so you know there's no denying it works how much effect it's going to have on this car no idea but that's what driving it to tell me the second issue which is a common common rumor but again nobody to my knowledge has ever fucking tried it to find out is is it gonna suck all the oil through to the compressor side when you let off the throttle off boost and make the exhaust smoke like fuck and fill the boost pipes full of oil. I don't know. Everyone gets that idea from the draw through turbo setups, but that's with just obviously the single throttle blades, blade or blades before the turbo, not one at the standard place as well on the inlet manifold. So in my head, in theory, and Thomas said the same without even me mentioning it, that potentially it won't it sh won't be a problem with a second throttle in the conventional place. But I don't know this, and I'll see. I mean, I can cope with a the odd puff of fucking smoke. I couldn't care less. It's a bloody the things a piece of shit. I don't give a fuck. Tune cars always gonna give a little bit of uh, smoke from the exhaust, but. Uh, Obviously, if it's going to be filling boost pipes full of oil and just being fucking shit, then hell no. But there's only one way to know, and that's to fucking try it. Because, like I said, the only people who's ever seemed to have done this is race car people. And um, getting info on, like, specialist things like this is nigh on impossible. So, who knows? But... It's on there. It looks fucking cool. And um, yeah, it works. Literally, it's synchronized. I've checked the throttle now. And yeah, it's quite stiff. 
but it's it's okay. Put all the hoses back on, and to be honest, it's pretty tidy. It tidies up this end way more than standard because now it's a single bend to the air filter rather than the uh, zigzag thing it was. But unfortunately, the zigzag thing was needed because coming off throttle, the air coming out the turbo back out the compressor inlet made the math a bit confused. But that throttle there should stop that because there won't be any air coming back out. So, well, we will see. I've no idea how well this is going to work, if at all. It might have fucking no worthwhile effect. Um, what I'm going to do is I've got the new chips now from Martin Smith. The ones that should have a higher rev limit and all that kind of crap. But for this initial test, I'm going to run with the previous ones, as in how I last drove the car. So I've got a fair back to back to see what difference it makes. Because I know from when he sent me that different ignition chip before, I had like 500 better RPM spool after he did me a chip rather than uh, just the random dickhead's chip that was in there before. So I don't want to like skew any results, good or bad really, of how effective this is or even what difference the chip makes by doing them both at the same time. The only way you can really get a fair test is to uh, do changes one at a time and this is one change. So, I'm going to put the original chips, the ones that you last saw, saw me drive the car with, in the car. Which, to be honest, apart from the rev limit being a bit low, yeah, they weren't bad. Um, I'm going to put them in and go take it for a drive. It's dark now and late now, so while I'll take you with me, um, it's, I'll, I'll do a better drive in the daytime. It's uh, time to test this pre-turbo throttle shenanigans. Now it's dry and daytime. Will it have any positive effect? Will it do clouds of fucking oil smoke out the exhaust because of this so-called uh, sucking in because of the vacuum on the compressor side? Which, again, it is a fact, but not necessarily on these, I don't know. Um, let's go find out. Yeah, throttle pedal's a bit heavy, but not ridiculous. But apart from that, let's start that. Don't need wipers today, it's actually dry. Starts like normal. Uh, yeah, I guess I better go for a drive. You just got to work out where I'm going to put the camera. Um, up there, probably. It's not ideal, but I'm kind of. I need to mount some better places in this car. I don't want to do head cam because it's a bit obvious in the daytime, and uh, my testing might attract a bit too much attention if I've got a fucking GoPro strapped to my head. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to put it up there.
Right, that's uh, first test complete. You wouldn't have seen all of that because the bloody battery died on the GoPro, but hopefully you saw some of it. And the answer is, well, good. Um, lag, as in true lag, I'm not talking about boost threshold. This is this has no effect on the RPM your turbo spools up at. I'm on about turbo lag between off throttle and on throttle within the boost threshold. Um, yes, it does work. I'm kind of not surprised because, well, that's why Formula One and everybody does it. But it, yes, it does work. I mean, you know, it's like um, normally you'd think, oh, well, maybe it's fucking placebo, you know, whatever. But because obviously that sort of thing is like hard to tell. But no, the reason you can tell on this is because the lag was so bad for the gearing before. Before changing up at say, you know, six and a half thousand RPM, um, you drop down to about five, which is well within the boost threshold, but it would still drop off boost and you would have what felt, well, what felt like a couple of seconds, but I don't know how long it really was, but quite a while before it, you know, hit, went back up to full boost and fucked off again. With um, this new setup, I can change up at six and a half and it's literally two bars straight away. Li you know, pretty much no lag. No lag in turbo car terms anyway, unlike how it was. It doesn't affect spooler. Like I said, it's like, uh, it wouldn't. That's boost threshold, that's different. But turbo lag, fuck yeah, it helps. And on this, anything that helps is good you know it's not as effective as proper anti-lag because that literally you know as in when anti-lag set up really properly like rally car anti-lag because you can have full boost any rpm you know any engine speed whatever any throttle position whatever but most people's anti-lag is just a few fucking pops and bangs and don't really do anything but genuinely this has a very positive effect Second to third and third to fourth, um, you change up and unlike before where there was a pause every time, now there's not. So yes, it works. Um, another good thing is I didn't see any smoke at the exhaust and obviously being a side exit, I can just see it in my rear view mirror. And if you was gonna see it, you would see it after letting off at like, you know, full boost or whatever. And you'd see a lot of smoke. I didn't see any. So that's promising, but what we'll do now is go and take a boost pipe off. We're going to take the boost pipe from the compressor, you know, the compressor outlet one, and uh, see if we can see any oil. Well, first signs all seem normal, so I'm going to take off this one, because obviously that would be the worst one, if any, because obviously that's straight after the compressor. And if this has got none, or next to none, then my theory that the second throttle means the usual scare store is about that needing a special carbon seal in front of the, well, behind the compressor wheel, is bullshit. But I don't know, so we will see. Holy shit, I've done this up tight. Fuck me. Yeah. Right then, the moment of truth. Place your bets. <laughs> I have no idea. I hope there's not, of course, but theory suggests, well, it's not a theory. Reality is, with a throttle in front of your turbo, normally it will suck oil in due to all the vacuum when you close the throttle. Um, with a second throttle, I think that's less likely, but we will see. Not a fucking sausage. Absolutely nothing. Well, there you go. There's your answer. Doesn't happen. Doesn't, isn't needed. Theory 
myth busted absolutely dry as a fucking bone and this is going from two bar on you know 2.1 bar on boost so to suddenly a closed throttle in front of the turbo so as much vacuum as you can get but with a second throttle it seems not a problem that is fucking good times one thing it also does which is a bad thing but I will take a lot less lag over that any day is there's no more turbo noise as in there's no chatter there's no nothing you close the throttle and understandably that closes so nothing comes out so there's no chatter there's no surge there's no whatever you want to call it it just nothing so um yeah i i love a bit of chatter but i will take uh no lag any day of the week over that so you know whatever so yeah now i'm going to go in there in back in the car and swap the chips on the ecus to the new improved ones that martin leaf's done where technically all he should have done is increase the rev limiter but even he's not 100% it's going to have worked because thanks to these fucking stupid basic ass ECUs there's about five different um, sort of bits of the programming that can affect the rev limit and it depends which ECU depends which bit it reads so he's, he's not even 100% he basically said let me know and if it don't work then it'd be one of the other ones he's got to change but uh, <laughs> hopefully it will. But I told him to leave the fuel in alone because it's, it's close enough. It's like, yeah, it's not perfect, but I think remotely it'd be too difficult for me to, or for, you know, me to explain what needs changing enough that he could accurately do it. So I said, leave it, it's not a problem. Um, and ignition, I said, because it's so dead low down, I said, if you can, make any ignition timing changes that might improve that go for it but i don't expect you could because it's just one of them things you can't ignition timing isn't magic you know you can't make a low compression two liter engine with a big turbo suddenly a fucking v8 low down power but we'll see i'll be interested one day if i could be bothered i mean it's just for fun because i don't give a shit to compression test this engine because it's it's low compression anyway, as in static compression. It's about seven and a half to one. But I reckon it's really fucking worn out. So I bet you the uh, the compression numbers on a compression tester would be really fucking low. Um, this is why I always say, unless you've got a real problem, who cares though? Do you know what I mean? It's like you can either stop driving your car because the compression is showing low and waste time and money getting it rebuilt or if it's still driving all right fucking just carry on use it i mean this i bet you the compressor is really low but as you can tell it's fast as fuck until there's actually a problem with your car i don't see the point of compression testing it and especially people who worry when all the four you know you know say it was a four cylinder and all four cylinders are reading lower than the factory but they're all within a, a few you know percentage of each other it's like so who cares that's not a problem if it's the likelihood of all of them being the similar compression but similarly low and there being an actual problem is fucking very very remote if they're within about 10 percent of each other then i would say there's nothing broken so just fucking enjoy your cars don't worry about it so much so yeah, I'm gonna now go in there and we're gonna change the chips and go for another test drive. It's raining a little bit, but hopefully it's dry enough that I can uh, still be able to put the power down because in the wet, this thing's pointless. It's like fourth gear will grip and it still feels sketchy. Third doesn't want to grip. So yeah, let's uh, change some chips. I've shown you this before 
and I still get people on loads of videos going, show you changing the chips. It's like, why? So I'm gonna put it in this fucking video as well. So that's the chip. This is the ignition one. You literally, um, it's got a little notch there so you know what side it goes in. Cause obviously you could pull it backwards if you wanted to. And to remove it, you just remove it. There's no magic. And as you might imagine, fitting it is about just fitting it. You see the little notch? See the, got a little notch there. You match that out with the ECU. Ignition V2. So you match the little notch in the end there with a the little notch in the end there. You just place it in, make sure the pins are lined up so you don't accidentally bend them. And then gently, hold on, make sure it's, you don't want to bend the fuckers. There. This is difficult with one hand. There, it's in. Simple. Now, I will put the lid back on. I'm not even going to do the screws up because I can't be bothered. Bostetronic ECU, made in Spain. And yeah, this is uh, pretty simple as well. You basically, these little tabs hold the lid on. I literally only use a couple of them rather than all of them because I'm always getting it off and on. So it's just, you know, you realistically only need about one. How many have I got actually holding it on here? One, I would say two and a half, maybe three. So just fold these back like that. I mean, look, they're so worn out. This was just broken off. I had this open about a million times. There. That is with the lid off. And again, a little notch. You just carefully get it out. Done it. And again, it shot out so fast. The last two pins very slightly bent, but it's not enough to matter. You just bend them back. So now, put in fuel V2. Same procedure as before. Notch there, notch there. Plonk it in. Make sure it all lines up. Done. That's it. You have chipped your ECUs. We go, oh, I don't know why you don't just get an aftermarket ECU rather than constantly messing about changing chips. You're telling me you can fucking map your car that fast? Literally five minutes with me holding the camera and talking to you about it just to change the chips. Big deal. You can guarantee every single person who says that on any comments can't map their own car anyway because it's not that fucking easy. And anyone who can map, if you're doing even a half good job, it takes hours, not fucking five minutes sitting there changing the chip. We're not talking some plug-in fucking stage one flash map load of shit like look, most people have got in their cars. This is, you know, custom to suit. So there you go. I'm gonna put this back on, plug it all back in, start the car. It's raining a bit, so I'm hoping it's not gonna be too bad. And we'll go for a second drive and see how it is.
that was interesting. Um, it now does seem to rev to seven, I think. I don't know. I don't think I've ever actually hit the limiter. But it felt like, you know, it didn't really need to go more than... It was nice to be able to go beyond six and a half. That was the main thing. It was, like, still pulling hard, which obviously helps a fucking lot with the extending the rev range because now it's four and a half until best part of seven, you know? So it's way better. Car feels a lot more lively as well, like, quicker, even quicker. Thanks to whatever's happened with these chips. The weird thing is, which is what I need to check now. I don't know if you could see the AFRs from the video. But they were showing mega fucking rich. Like, um, practically as soon as I put my foot down, even off boost, it was going to like 10 O's. And on boost, like, you know, flat out, it was showing like... I think the minimum this uh, wideband will read, it was literally showing eight O's. But there's no way that can be correct because generally this car, well, most cars, if you got into the fucking low tens, they would misfire or heavily lose power. This car tends to really very noticeably lose power. If it ever dips into the nines, it literally feels like it's slowing down. But that was showing eight, eight O's, and it was fucking flying. So surely the wideband's playing up for some reason. Exactly what, I don't know. Bit strange, but um, I mean, it was fine earlier, but there's no way these are correct because it doesn't drive like that. But yeah, I'm sure that's not right. There's no car that can pull that hard doing eight zero AFRs, it's not a fucking methanol. <sighs> fucking nitromethane with that kind of uh, AFRs. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm not sure. I it, Maybe the sensor's gone tits up. Either way, fuck it, who cares? The, it's bloody fast. It's a lot more drivable with more RPM. And the pre-turbo throttle helps. A lot to get rid of the lag between gear changes so overall great fucking success did i explain already the difference between boost threshold and lag This little bit, which I'll insert somewhere in the video, is basically to update on the thing with the AFRs being weird. Although I was 99% sure it was the Lambda sensor playing that, there's always that bit of what if paranoia. So I swapped back the chips one at a time, literally put the fuel chip back in, went for a drive, Swap back to the other one, then put the ignition chip in, went for a drive, blah, 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 all that. And yeah, no change. So, yeah, it's not the chips. The chips, the AFRs are fine. That's what they, I mean, they felt great. It was flying. No hesitation, no loss of power. It felt faster with these new chips at Martin Smith and Stem 3 than it's ever done. But the AFRs were right on the piss and they are now with the original ones. So it's just the Lambda sensor has died. They fail in all kinds of different ways and they tend to not last that long. But it's lasted, what, approximately a year? A bit more than, well, more than a year. And it's had a right kick in. So it's done alright, I can't complain. So, yeah, job done. I am now, well, I got... To... <laughs> It's two ways of looking at it. I'm in two minds whether to even bother buying a sensor right now because now I know the AFRs are fine. Might just, who cares, leave it. Just send it. You know, it's a tuning tool. And now the car as it is, 
is tuned to a level that I'm fine with. I don't want to uh, change anything else right now. The problems it had was the lag and the low rev limit. Now the lag between gear changes is gone and the low rev limit is gone. So fucking I'm happy with it. I mean still, you know, it's all four and a half thousand RPM plus, but that's big turbo, small capacity life, unfortunately. That's just how it works. So I don't really care. You know. I would have you know, if I had a choice of this or the original setup, it was like three and a half or so. I think this is better. This is hard, much harder work, don't get me wrong. But the way this pulls, and it seems, and it's healthier on the car, to be honest, I prefer this. So, whatever. And it sounds mental. So, yeah. Overall, I hope you like this video. And I hope you've found this informative. And I reckon you have, because when I posted this on Instagram, the picture of the throttle, pretty much nobody had a clue why I was doing it. So, um... Yeah, hopefully this has been a bit of an eye-opener. It's something that I've always, always known about, but never, ever been able to test because it's almost unheard of on road cars. But my tests show, obviously, on my car and my setup, I can't talk for everybody, but, oh, fuck, yes, it makes a difference. And, oh, fuck, no, does it um, make any oil go into the turbo? So that's awesome. So, yeah. If you like what you see plenty more like this to come fucking hell if i had actual money from from whatever from youtube for example if i was making actual money all i would do was tests i've got so many tests in my head i just need to fund them this is the first one i've got hundreds like this that most of you've probably never seen but without money i can't afford it i mean if i had an engine dyno oh my god i'd be like engine masters times a hundred I'll be testing stuff flat out for my own, you know, for my own knowledge as much as anything. So, yeah, if you like what you see, like, subscribe, share this, comment, do everything positive because anything you can will help this channel grow and I'm going to go. So, goodbye and I'll see you next time. And honestly, this battery is on zero, so I've got to go because it could be turning off any minute now. It's actually went from 0% to 1% while I'm talking. Now back to zero.